Hey, what's going on developers? Welcome back to the Next.js version 14 full course with a real estate project. So in the previous videos, we have completed the authentication as well as the user properties page with all its features. We can see the details about the user properties, edit a properties and also delete a property. And of course, we can add a new property. We have put the pagination here in this page. And now that we have completed this page, we are going to create the landing page and actually create this page so this is the final version of this project we haven't completed this landing page so in this video we are going to create this page which is our landing page for a real estate application and if you want to watch the previous episode of this tutorial you can click on the card here and also i put the link of all the previous episode in the description below so i think that's enough with the introduction and without further ado let's get right into it okay so this is our project and here is the app directory and inside it we have the home page so this is going to be our landing page our home page actually so i open it up and the first thing we should do here is to fetch the properties from our database so here first we need to turn it to a async function okay and then inside it we are going to get the properties so here i want to call the prisma client that find many function so here i'm going to say await prisma and then property and from that we're going to call the find many function so this function actually fetch all the properties from the property table we're going to pass the configuration object to it and since we are going to fetch all the properties from the property table we don't want to use the where api to limit the result set of this query with a condition so we are actually going to fetch all the properties but here keep in mind that we need to implement a pagination here and fetch data page by page but we are going to implement the pagination in the next video so in this video we don't want to do that and simply we are going to fetch all the data inside the property table and here we don't want to fetch all the fields of the property table we want to fetch the fields of the property table and the other table that related to the property table that we need inside our landing page so let's get back to the browser you can see we need the picture of the property we need the name of the property we also need the city and the state of the location of the property and also we need the price of the property so let's go back to the database diagram so here you can see the database diagram of this real estate application you can see we need to select the name of the property price of the property we need to select the property image table and also from the location which is here we need to select the city and also the state not any more data so let's get back to the vs code and here inside the find many function configuration object we need to specify the fields that we are going to fetch for each property so we're going to specify the select api here and inside that we're going to say that we want to select the id from the property so we're going to set it to true we need the name of the property we also set it to true we need the price set it to true okay and also we need the images of the property so here specify the images and inside it we can specify the select and say that we want the url so let's set the url to true okay so we are actually using the nested select api here okay we don't want any more fields from the images so after the images we're going to specify the location okay and from the location we're going to select the city and also state okay so i set it to true here and now we need to stir the returning object of this find menu function to a constant for example properties okay now we can just render the data here we're going to use the json that stringify and pass the properties object so let's save this and go to the browser this is the final version and this is the version that now we are working on so you can see the stringify data of the properties rendered in the main div of our page okay so now let's get back to the vs code and now we need to create this property card in order to visualize the data about each property so let's get back to the vs code and create this property card i go to the components directory of the app directory and create a new component i'm gonna call it property card 
the TSX. Okay, so here let's create a component. Then want this line. First, we need to create an interface for the props of the component. So I'm gonna say interface props, and inside that we're gonna have a property props. So we can't just naively set the type of the property to the property type that comes from the Prisma client. It doesn't match the type of the returning object of this find menu function. So here, let's just copy this select API. And then here we need to use the Prisma with the uppercase P. We're going to import that from the Prisma slash client. Don't confuse that with the Prisma client that we have created inside the lib directory and Prisma.ts file. So make sure that you are importing the Prisma with the uppercase P from the Prisma slash client. And now we can use a type called property get payload. And here in the generics, I'm going to paste the select object that I have copied from the find menu function in the home page. Okay. Okay, so let's save this and now the type of this property is in match with the type of the properties that comes from the find many function. Okay, so now here in the property card, we are going to grab the property. So first we need to set the type of the props to props interface that we have just created. And then we can grab the property from the props. Okay, so here let's just render the name of the property, property.name. Okay, and let's get back to the home page here. And instead of this stringify function, we're going to use the property card. Okay, and then we need to specify the property props so here we're gonna set it to the first object of the properties okay let's get back to the browser go to our current version of the application you can see the name of the property inside our home page this is the property card so now let's get back to the VS code and go to the property card here let's first render the image of the property so we're gonna use the image component I'm gonna use the image from the next UI slash react but but you can use the next slash image because it's more efficient but you can use the next UI image components it is a styled version of the image component okay so here let's import that and first we need to set the src we're going to set it to property that images and we are going to grab the first one and then use the url property okay so we need to set the class name here we're going to use the object field okay and then w 96 for its width and h48 for its height okay now let's get back to the browser you can see the image of the property here inside the product card okay now let's change the div here to a card component from the next ui and let's put a class name here class name and then use w72 for its width okay flex and also flex cool because we are going to stack the element inside the card so that's why we use the select flex cool here and then when hover we're going to scale it's five percent bigger okay so i use the scale 105 and also let's put a shadow for it it has a shadow prop let's set it to md okay now let's get back to the browser we can see this is the product card the hover doesn't work here let's get back to the vs code we have misspelled the scale here fix that and save that and now we can see the hover is working now we need to put the name of the property and also the city and state of the property. Okay, here I go back to the VS code and after the image, we're gonna use a div element and we're gonna set its class name to P4 for its padding. And inside it, we're gonna render a P tag. We're gonna put the property that name inside it. Okay, and then we are going to put another P tag. We're gonna put the property that location that city, a comma here, and again, put the property that location that state okay now let's put some class name here in the div for p tag for the first one we're gonna set the color to the text primary 600 and text xl for the size 
and also font bold. For the second one, we are going to set the class name to text slate 600 for the text color. Okay, now let's get back to the browser. You can see the name and also the city and the state. And note that here, these are some fake and dummy data for the state and city. So we just need to go to our database and put some more realistic data for the city and state. But for now, this just works for us. Okay, so we want to remove this radius here on the bottom of the image. So I get back to the image here and we have a radius prop. I'm going to set it to none. Okay, now let's get back to the browser. You can see the radius of the bottom of the image is gone. But here you can see the radius on the top of the image. It's not the radius of the image. It's the radius of the card component. Okay, so let's get back to the final version. Now we need to create this button section for rendering the price and also view details link. Get back to the VS code. And after this div, we're going to put another div. First, we need to set the class name. Uh, we want to use a gradient background. So I use BG gradient to BR and from slate 500 to slate 200. Okay, so these are for the gradient background color. And then we need to put a P4 for its padding and flex because we are going to put the price and the link component side by side and justify between because we are going to put two elements on the sides of this div. Okay, so now inside the div, we're going to put a P tag and render the property dot price dot two local string. Okay, and now let's put a dollar sign before it. After the P tag, we're going to render a link component. So make sure that you're importing the link from the next link set the href to property and then slash property id so i put a back text here i'm going to set it to slash property and then i'm going to put the id of the current property so i use the property dot id and for the caption i'm going to say view details okay let's put some styling here for the link components so i use the class name here i'm going to say on hover use the text primary 500 and let's have some transition colors for changing the color of the text okay so now let's get back to the current version you can see the price of the components and here the view details of the component so if i click on that you can see we are headed to the property details page that we have created previously in this tutorial okay so let's get back to the home page and now we need to create a container that renders all the properties that we have fetched from our database okay now let's go back to the vs code and here in the components directory of the app directory i want to create another component called property container tsx okay here let's create a component let's remove this line let's create an interface for the props for now let's just use the type here type props and set it to props with children of the react okay for now let's save this and here we can set the type of the props to props type that we have just created and we can grab the children okay here inside the main div here we are going to render the children as well as a pagination component that we are going to implement in the next video so here in the main div let's create another div here and inside the div we are going to render the children and here let's mark it to do here for next video put pagination here okay so we're going to do that in the next video but for now let's put some class name here for the main div we're going to put a p5 for padding flex and flex cool and then gap 10 for space between the pagination component and the children and then items center okay here in the div that contains the children which actually are the property cards we are going to pass the class name here again we're going to use the flex because we are going to put the children side by side flex wrap and also justify center and a gap of six for the space between the properties car okay now let's get back to the home page here and now here inside this div we are going to render a property container component and here inside this component as the children we are going to map 
through the properties, pass the callback, takes the property, and for each property, we are going to render a property card. So here, just render a property card, and we need to pass the property props here to property that we have here in the map function okay we need to set the key here to property that id we can also just rename the property here to property item i think it is better for understanding the code here okay so now let's get back to the browser you can see all the properties here inside our home page so we have a problem here and you can see here the bottom section of these properties doesn't stick to the bottom of the property card component so in order to fix that we need to go to the property card component and here inside the property card we are going to wrap these two divs here after the image inside a parent div so the first div is for rendering the name of the property and also the city and the location and the second div is the actually the bottom section of our property card that contains the price and link inside it so here we're going to put a div here and then wrap these two divs inside this new div and let's get back to the parent div here now let's put class name here flex and flex call then we are going to use empty arrow which stands for margin top arrow so it will push this div all the way to the bottom of the card component so now let's get back to the browser now you can see the bottom section of each card is now pushed down and stick to the bottom of the card component awesome so this will brings us to the end of this video and if this video was helpful for you please share it with your friend and if you like the video and subscribe to my channel that will be icing on the cake so stay tuned for my next video in the next video we are going to implement the pagination for this landing page have a nice time bye bye